Welcome back friends. Let's proceed with the part of the cytoskeleton. So cytoskeleton, as the terminology says, cyto means cell and the skeleton means skeleton. So as we know skeleton always is the structure which maintain which maintain this the shape of something. If we say the skeleton of human being means it is composed of bones which are maintaining the shape of human being and sometimes protecting and involved in the other functions. Even the cytoskeleton is the cell skeleton involved in the maintaining of the shape of the cell and also it involved in the functions of transporting different materials within the cell. So simply cytoskeleton is the complex network of fibrous protein. The protein fibers of the cytoskeleton are dynamic system, constantly being formed and disassembled. So the cytoskeleton consists of protein that support the cell, hold the organelle in place in the cytoplasm, and enable the cell to change its shape. So if you hear that the cell, some of the cells have the ability maybe to engulf the foliage materials, of to phagocytose. The ability to phagocytose comes from the cytoskeleton. So without the cytoskeleton, cell cannot fold its cell membrane and phagocytose the foliage materials. So cytoskeleton in eukaryotic cell can be divided how it consists of three, three subunits which are microtubules, microfilaments, sometimes called actin filaments, and the intermediate filaments. So microtubules, these are thin cylindrical tubules, non-membranous, found in all eukaryotic cells, either single or in group. Microtubules are straight and blanched hollow cylinders, which are usually short in length. They occur in most plant and animal cells. Microtubules are involved in the movement of cytoplasmic components within the cell. So they are involved in the movement of cytoplasmic components in the cell. They are also in the centriole. They are also in the centriole. That means the microtubes, they are making up centrioles. We shall discuss centrioles later. But what you should know is that the microbodies they form what you call the basal bodies of the movement structures. That is what you call centrioles present at the base of the cilia and flagella. So they are also in the central, in the spindle, in cilia and flagella, and in the basal bodies. So without the microtubules, we couldn't have the movement structures such as cilia and flagella. So microtubules are made up of proteins. They are made up of protein. They help to maintain the shape of the cell. Help to maintain the shape of the cell and act as the route along which organelle they move or organelle can move. They are hollow tubules made up of fibrous proteins. They are laid and act as supporting structure in the cell forming a cytoskeletal and intercellular skeleton. So generally, they are made of protein, and the protein here they have not mentioned, but it is called tubulin. So I beg you to go to BS and find this name. It is called tubulin. So sometimes teacher they ask you to define this tubulin, and tubulin it's the they are small molecules which are making up microtubules. Now function of microtubules. They provide the skeleton support, that is internal skeleton or cytoskeleton that help the cell to maintain their shape. The second thing, they help in the transportation of material within the cytoplasm by providing the routes along which materials move. The third thing, they bring about the movement of chromosomes during nuclear division. And they, they are called spindle fiber. When they influence the chromosome movement, they are called spindle fiber. 
in the spindle in the spindle during cell division and within the centrioles from which the spindle is formed they help to draw chromosomes or chromatids to opposite poles of the cell and this is done in the animal cell in the plant cell it is not known until now that what organelle because centrioles they are only present in the animal cell so what organelle cause the movement of the spin uh, movement of the chromatids in the plant cell division during plant cell division and the formation of spindle fiber what organelle influence that it's not known until now in plant cell but in the animal cell it's known that they are microtubules so the fourth function they are part of the structure of centriole cilia and flagella basal bodies and hence involved in, in the involved they are involved in the movement so in part of adaptation of the microtubules microtubules they have ability to be formed rapidly and reform finally they disappear after their job or aim to be completed so they are formed rapidly and after the job is completed they they disappear the second thing they are elongated so that they can support the transportation of cell organs such as golgi apparatus within the cell and the third thing they are, they are stiff so that it, they support the cell so that's all about the microbodies and its function in the cell now distribution or location of the microbodies within the cell as i told you here that different organelles within the cell they have different distribution according to their functions so microtubules they are found more at the following regions or parts first is the cortex of the meristematic tissue of the plant second at the cilia of animals like paramecium third at the flagella of animals like euglena then at the centrioles at the basal body nerve processes and at the mitotic apparatus to form a framework along which cellular cell wall of plant is laid down so these are the positions or location within the cell where the microbodies they are abundant now let's go into another part of the cytoskeleton which is your microfilaments or sometimes called actin filaments so microfilaments they are fine thread like structure that are arranged in sheet of bundle just beneath the cell surface membrane they are lobe like assembly of fibrous polypeptide but specific type varies according to the tissue they are intermediate in size between the actin filament and the microtubules they are intermediate in size so microfilament microfilament are the one which are called microfilament are the one which are called actin filaments according to your microfilament are the one which are called actin filament the intermediate filament they are another so i think here they have mixed some of the concepts in they mixed the, this this the intermediate inside could be in the intermediate filaments so the microfilaments they are smallest ones and they are called actin filaments so intermediate filament i think here some of the things they have been mixed the, with the concept of the intermediate filament so function of microfilaments they are involved in the movement of muscle during the interaction of actin and myosin i think you can't understand the action of actin and myosin but during the contraction of muscle actin and myosin they come together and pull each other so let's say they they could have this distance and then they pull each other until they come and they bind together this is what we call the contraction of muscle and when the muscle relaxes the actin and the myosin filament 
they are releasing each other. So that's what is, is gone during the contraction of muscle. And another function of the microfilament, they hope to bring about the cleavage of animal cell division, the orphanuclear division or cytoplasm cleavage. That is the second function of the microfilament. And the third function of the microfilament, they are associated with cell motility, wool cell and within the cell. So they are associated with cell motility. So let's go to the intermediate filaments. These are structures intermediate between micro and macro tubules. So micro tubules and micro filaments. At the in between of them, we have intermediate filaments. So they are largely found at the base of microvilli. Largely found at the base of microvilli. As I told you that the micro tubules they are largely found at the base of the flagella cilia and they form the basal bodies but here intermediate filaments they are found at the base of the microvilli so microvilli or singular microvillus a finger like projection of the plasma membrane of some animal cell specialized for absorption such as in intestinal epithelium and kidney tubules the epithelium kidney tubules epithelium Actin filaments within the microvilli allow them to contract, which along with the large surface area facilitate absorption. This is not actin filament, simply this is intermediate filaments. As I told you earlier that there is some of the misconception here for typing, writing error. So each microvillus contain band of actin and myosin filament band of actin and myosin filaments these are proteins found in muscle which cause muscle contraction and here in the microtubules they cause the same thing that is muscle contraction the function of microvilli is to increase the surface area for absorption of material and to improve the efficiency of digestion in the gut because certain digestive enzymes are attached to the air surface such as pancreatic amylase, trypsin and lipase. Note the microvilli are absent in plant cell because of rigid cell wall, resist the extension and outgrowth of the cell membrane, that is plasma membrane. So in short, that's all about the intermediate filament. They are found at the base of the microvilli and they facilitate the whole process of the whole process of movement which takes place at the base of the microvilli. So now let's touch a little about the circulatory vesicles. As I told you in the previous lecture that you have different types of vesicles and the circulatory vesicles, they are one among the types of vesicles. So many cells are involved in the secretion or secreting a variety of substances such as, such as cell concentrate and store the products in the cell in the circulatory vesicles. So the circulatory vesicles, circulatory vesicles arise from the face of the Golgi apparatus and they are released the, or they release their content by the process of exocytosis. And in the part of storage glanules, circulatory vesicles just has ended here. The, its major function is to transport materials from the cell to the outside. That's why they are called circulatory, means they are used in the secretion, that is secretion we can define it as the removal of the useful materials we are removing materials from the cell but they are useful and in the storage glanules we can say that every cell contains a limited store of the food energy so the food energy which is stored in the cell it is stored in the form of the storage glanules this storage may be in the form of soluble materials such as sugar found in the vacuoles of plant cell 
It also occurs in the insoluble form is glaying or glanules within the cell organ. Such glaying occurs within the chloroplast and the cytoplasm of the plant cell. Such may also be stored in the specialized leucoplast called the amyloplast. And the glycogen glanules occur throughout the cytoplasm of animal cell. They store animal starch or glycogen. Oily or lipid droplets are found within the cytoplasm of both plant and the animal cell. So that's all about the storage glanules. Let's meet the, sec the next lecture where we shall be talking about the centrioles or centrosomes and all the facts about the cilia and the flagella. So let me wish you nice studies. Subscribe the channel for more updates in biology and chemistry. Thank you everybody. Nice studies.